Hello there, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Thanks very much for joining me today. I do hope you're well. Here we are back in Lunar Zoo. And in our last episode, we were building this, if I do say so myself, this very beautiful looking hippo habitat. And as you can see, our hippos are all very happy here, all lying around being lazy as hippos do. Oh look, they all just stood up at the same time. It's like an earthquake and suddenly every hippo stood up. That was quite weird, wasn't it? <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, this is filled in this, this corner of the zoo really nicely over here. And I was very, very pleased with how it all came out. I'm very happy with all my nature work and my structures. So yeah, very, uh, very nice um, habitat. And today, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, no doubt, we are going to be building a sun bear habitat and that is going in just over here and you'll see that i've already started just a little bit of work on it so this corner over here was the next obvious space for me to build a habitat in so here are our two sun bears as you can see we have ratu our little girl sun bear and we have kayono kayono Kayono, not sure how you're meant to pronounce that, I'm afraid, but there he is, chilling out. Oh, he's lying on his food. It's a bit silly, you're meant to eat it, not sleep on it. So there are some bears, and they, oh, look, this one's just sitting down. I love how they sit like that, that's great, isn't it? Got lovely colouring with this this little pattern under their chin there on, the, on their chest. Oh, with the, um, some bears, we've actually got a couple of these locally to me in. Um, a place that I've mentioned before called Wingham Wildlife Park. It's a lovely place, and they, in the last couple of years, they've they've actually built a uh, a sun bear habitat. So I have seen these in the flesh, and they are adorable little things. They really are. They run around all over the place. Very active bears. A lot of bears aren't very active, but these ones certainly seem to be in real life. Although at the moment, these two certainly aren't. But they're going in to this little corner of our zoo over here. Obviously, this uh, the habitat. Um, border here is just a temporary edge just to keep them in and I've already put in the water so I wanted a decent amount of water because they do swim uh, I'm pretty sure they swim anyway uh, let's have a look I'm sure I've seen them swim yes so they do they go right in the water so they've got a nice natural looking pond here um, and my, my idea with this habitat I, I had an idea that I wanted to do a, a, a raised um, bed up on a hill at the back here with a stream running down and into the water but I also I wanted to build a pathway going up the hill to the bedroom area that crossed over the stream using rocks to make it look really natural like the, the stream is sort of flowing around the rocks and and the bears are, are running sort of across the water on the rocks that sort of thing so that was my basic theory and then around the rest it would just be pretty standard decoration um, but it was having the, the idea of having a, a bed area up on the rocks is something that i would not really done before um, I suppose it's similar to what I did over here with the with the leopards uh, the idea of having the the rocks form a, a slope so that the animals can walk up the hill so it's a similar kind of idea but i wanted there to be the house at the top and i wanted to involve water so it's sort of adding another element in that was going to make it even more complicated uh, here we go he's having a little swim now um so yeah so that is that is my idea and um this is how this is how it goes so let me uh, let me zoom right along and we'll crack on with a bit of building shall we right so you can see here that kind of the start of the structure of what I wanted to do um, I put in a, a temporary house over here just so the animals had somewhere to go inside for now um, I was toying with the idea of having a downstairs habitat area um, habitat area you know what I mean habitation area sorry like a you know a bedroom down there as well as at the top um, but I, uh, in the end I do get rid of that so this was the idea of having this um, this sort of stream slash waterfall coming down here and then using the rocks to make a gentle slope certainly up to here and then using the rocks to actually cross over the water um, clearly the, obviously this is just a work in progress as to how I'm trying to, trying to cover it all up um, but you get the idea and then the, the water ends up flowing obviously down into 
the main pond here. Um, it's, it's, yes, it, it is tricky, but as you can see, already it, it is taking shape. You can see that the bears are using it. Um, so already they can they can come up to here. Uh, in the end, I, I make it so they, they come up to here and they have to go around the outside and then back across. And I think I actually remove these two top ones here and 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 have to habitat at that sort of level I think I can't remember um, I'll be honest it's been a little while since I built this one um, but that was my thinking was that you know that's that's the basic look I, I wanted it to look really impressive from ground level with all these little mini waterfalls uh, so that that was my thinking there um, right so let's uh, let's load up my next uh, save point and see what I did next all change really. Um, I decided that having the two uh, parts of the stream, it wasn't working. I couldn't manipulate the rocks in the right way. Um, you can see in the background here, I, I saved the whole structure there just in case I changed my mind. Uh, but actually it worked out much better. If I just had one, it gave me that extra bit of room to really get the rock work correct to create this gentle slope coming up here and ultimately ending in the bed area. So as you can see now, if I go to the traversable area, there we are. So the bears can walk all the way up the slope, across the water, around the corner, up there, and into their bed. And again, obviously, this is all just temporary around the back here. <laughs> obviously, I'm not going to have floating rocks. It's all going to be built up with proper rocks in the end. Uh, but now you can actually see the, the final shape of the whole thing and it's uh yeah it's, it's pretty cool i think um it's an interesting idea doing this sort of thing it's something that i hadn't done before um and it's uh at this stage i, I still wasn't too sure how i was going to make it look good um i just wanted to get the basic structure in really and then see what happened um but luckily once you've got it to this stage all you got to do is just keep on filling in all the little gaps with rocks which if you've seen any of my other videos you'll see that I've, I've done that quite a lot with these rock uh, pieces in these water pieces. And it's pretty easy to make it look good. You just got to cover up all of this concrete. And then you, you use the little faux rock pieces. You just sink them in on the fronts and on the tops here. Put a few plants around as well. And it, it's very easy to make it look really, really good and really effective and really natural. Um, which is obviously what I end up doing. And it does look fantastic in the end. Uh, but obviously the, the main thing to get right is this, this basic structure so that the animals can definitely get to the top. And then as you put all the rocks in, obviously, you, you oh look, we're going to watch one now. He's going to go up to sleep. Dilin, 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 dilin. See, they're pretty nippy when they get running. They do move pretty fast. There we go. Look at that perfect demonstration there of what they can do. It was almost perfect timing really, wasn't it? Look at him. He's going up for a little snooze. No, oh, that's brilliant. Who is this? Is this? Yes, it's our little Kayono. Hello, Kayono. He's not sure if he wants to sleep or not. Oh, a little scratch. Oh, look at that tongue. Oh, my word. I've never seen a tongue so long. I wonder what they eat with that tongue. That's 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 the sort of tongue that you, you get termites out of termite mounds with. I wonder if they do that. Oh, that's got me really interested now. Let's see what it says in the Zoopedia, shall we? Why do they have such long tongues? Uh, long snout, small rounded ears, blah, 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 blah. Um, da, 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 da. I wonder what it's... Uh, is it going to say somewhere? No. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, we can go with the binturong, can it? Okay. I don't think it says anywhere about their tongue. Hmm. No, it doesn't. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm just scanning through this. I know you don't want to listen to me reading. It's not very interesting for the video, is it? But I'm just intrigued as to why they have 
Such a long tongue. No, it doesn't say. I, I'm, you, generally, with an animal has a long tongue, it's because they need to get their tongue in places that their paws can't go. So I would assume that maybe it's um, something like termites, but they'd, they'd be a bit small for a bear. So I'm wondering what else it might be. Hmm. Answers on a postcard, people, if you know. I know I could just Google it, but um, I'm, I like to try and figure these things out for myself. I'm wondering if maybe it's you know, like wasps nests or something like that, some sort of nest that they they want to get into or burrow in the ground, something, I don't know, something, generally a tongue is only big enough for insects, you're not going to be able to reach into like a ferret burrow and, and pull out a ferret with your tongue, are you? Whereas there are creatures like anteaters, for example, that use their tongues down in the holes to pull out ants. Um, so I'm, usually that's what their you know long tongues are used for. So yeah, I do wonder. I might have to Google that. Anyway, back to business. Uh, that is our structure there. So let me uh, let me continue and uh, and see what I got up to next. Okay, we are back with our sun bears. And before I tell you what I've been up to, although you can obviously see it on the screen. I will tell you that I have now googled why some bears have such long tongues and I was basically correct. They use it to get particularly honey and insects out of trees, in fact it says. Um, so various things that are inside trees, insects in particular, uh, bee larvae it mentioned. Um, so yes, yeah, so they, they use it to, to gather insects and, and honey essentially, uh, which is what I expected. Um, so there we go. A little bit of education for you there. I do like to educate as much as I can. Right, so you can see what I've been up to. A lot of rock work basically and it was a bit fiddly in places. Um, I found when I placed some of these rocks down it actually blocked off their traversable area on this ramp. So I had to just m move the ramp outwards a little bit and just create a, a little bit more space for them. Uh, but it wasn't too bad at all really. And so I've just done some basic work all the way around the back as well and on top I've used uh, this this is a new bit for me actually I've never used this in a building before this wooden plank edging I think it's really really good actually I really like it obviously it's only suitable for certain types of enclosures because it's all open so you couldn't use this as a nice solid structure um, you know something that you actually want uh, to be sort of airtight and warm or whatever uh, but actually for this sort of thing, which is why I wanted it to look like a, a hut essentially, it actually worked out really, really good. Uh, and then I went with a thatched roof as well. And as you can see, our sun bears are up here and happy. They just lounge around on the, uh, on the straw, sitting on the rocks, and they're very happy up here. Um, because it would be it would be fairly warm up here, but also cool because you've got a bit of a breeze coming in through the through the side. Uh, so yeah, that's um, I'm really happy with how that turned out. The rock work itself, again, obviously it really comes to life once I do foliage. But for now, I, again, it, it, it's looking really good just just with the rock work, isn't it? I'm I'm really pleased, particularly these little bridges. Um, I think they turned out really well. These these faux rock pieces that I sink in. Uh, again, this is something that I've, I've done on every bit of water I've ever done in the game. So you will have seen this before if you've seen my videos. It, it makes such a difference rather than leaving these bits blank. When you just sink these little rock pieces in, it just looks fantastic, doesn't it? It really looks like the water is moving through the rocks and splashing on them. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's coming along very, very nicely. And uh, obviously there's still a lot more to do with the rocks, a bit more rock work probably around the edge of the, the pond, lots of foliage to be done. I've also, as you can see, created a custom barrier. Uh, so this is one big piece, but let me just show you. It is a simple mesh piece here. You've got a log here and at the bottom it's just a, a beam um, just copied down. Let me just get out of that so you can actually see what I've done. Um, and I just I didn't want it to just look like a lot of other barriers that I've done where it's just solid. I just wanted something a bit different. So the middle bit of the barrier, I simply just moved it backwards. So on the inside it just looks like a step, but on the outside you just end up with a little hole. It's such a simple thing, but actually I think just little details like that, it just makes it look a bit different, doesn't it? Rather than that being completely solid. Uh, it's a really small detail, but actually when you're, when you're building multiple habitats, over and over and over again, it, it, it's good to just make little differences like that and it, it just makes it stand out as something a little bit different. Um, 
so yeah pleased with that got a little bit of border showing on the pathway there that I need to cover up so I'll have to do something with that later um, but yeah as a barrier it's 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 pretty straightforward and simple but it works um, I integrated over here with the the wooden gate as well so just a small bit of mesh going in above there so I think that works really nicely actually I think that that, that fitted in perfectly in this corner here so yeah very pleased with that as well uh, and got rid of the shelter downstairs because I, I decided I didn't want that in the end uh, and just covered this with the barrier and then I had to sort of be a bit creative with the barrier going up the the rock work here um, I was I wasn't too sure whether I needed to raise this piece up um, I, I suspect in real life the bears can probably climb so you maybe wouldn't actually just have this mesh um, I think the, they, they could probably climb up mesh they certainly got long claws and they're quite strong so uh, sure in real life it probably wouldn't work this sort of barrier um, I know certainly in uh, in wing and wildlife park the barriers all glass so that they can't climb uh, but you know what for the game for the point of this game and this do I've gone with the mesh because I think it looks good um, I'm a big fan of these mesh pieces I think they're they're very very helpful and then again over here I just had to as, as I bought the the barrier through I just kept on having to sort of raise it up and step it uh, so that it went all the way up and connected to the uh, the house at the top and then on this side again just had to manipulate it a bit and just get this this small piece of mesh in at the end to fill in the gap there and I think it all worked out really nice actually so I'm, yes I'm very pleased with the look of that so far uh, particularly with this stream I just think it looks fantastic and the fact that I've managed to get it so the bears can actually walk all the way up like that up to the top it's exactly what I wanted it to look like so when you're down here I think it's going to look really cool having this hill uh, with the with the house at the top um, hopefully the bears will spend a lot of time obviously down the bottom here because you won't be able to see them up close as well um, as you can see they, they they only really go up there to sleep and the rest of the time they're roaming around down here so that's uh, that's what you want isn't it you want to be able to see animals up close and personal um, yeah so it's coming together really nicely I'm very very pleased with that so far uh, let me uh, let me move on and uh, see what I get up to next okay so our habitat is now finished and I've decided to show you it from back by the reptile house so here we are back here at the entrance to the reptile house so as you walk around the corner here you will see that I've filled in the border on the left here so I've continued this same theme with all the different palms going all the way around here leading up to the entrance to our sun bears and I had this awkward little corner here um, so I put in a, a, a raised flower bed here with just a couple of a couple of nettles and a couple of plants and the information board in there. Um, I thought that'd be nice as you approach around this corner, so you kind of get a glimpse in the distance of what you're going to be looking at, and then you get a little bit of information hidden in the in the flower bed there as well. Um, and as you come along the front here, you are greeted by a bear. Look at that! Hello, Mr. Bear or Mrs. Bear. You have a little scratch and uh, yeah let's have a look what else have we got in here we have our hummock hammock hammock sorry not a hummock hammock so that is in there and they do climb up on top of that and uh, and sleep in it which looks very cool indeed as we come along here I put in a couple of um, flower um, flower tubs in here because we had some of the paths showing uh, so basically on these two corners I just had to put in a small flower pot and another information board on the end there and that works really nicely it's, it has a little bit of symmetry to it with that in the middle and then them on either side so I didn't mind doing that uh, I kind of like uh, kind of like that sort of thing just finding ways to creative ways of, of covering stuff up or filling in a gap um, it's, it's something I, I do quite enjoy doing so actually I didn't mind that at all so let me raise the camera up and you can see what I've done inside the habitat the obvious thing is of course vegetation so I decided I, I did want some trees I didn't want too many but I went with these uh, what are they the Himalayan birch um, because they're they're quite bald low down so I didn't want to block the view of all this stream area I wanted you to be able to see through but I also wanted something that looked a bit mountainous and these Himalayan birch do especially when you angle them like this one up here where you have it growing out sideways uh, and these ones are the same they, they just they lean they just I don't know they just look a bit windswept 
um, and just just cool. I just really like them. So they they certainly work well when they're coming out of rocks. But as you can see with this, uh, you can see the sun bear climbing up there. So even from back here, you've still got a decent view where you can see the sun bears um, as they climb up the rocks there. So that's pretty cool. Um, I did also put a couple of these massive trees in here. I, I wanted something to give some height here um, to kind of kind of the, something that I've been trying to do is link areas together isn't it with height and, or structures or archways so over here you've got archways connecting stuff and here I just wanted something connecting this huge building here with this little bit here so using the height of these trees it almost sort of links them together visually even if not physically uh, and that was my thinking plus just as you view it from over here as you come around the corner here I just thought it looked good having a couple of nice big trees it just adds that sort of sense of depth and distance in there um, probably overthinking stuff like that a lot but that's what I do you know I'm a gardener so I think about that sort of thing a lot when I'm designing gardens um, you know you've got to you've got to draw the eye to certain places you've got to have stuff in the foreground and the midground and the and the uh, the, the the distance as well so yes yeah, so that was my thinking with those two big trees in the background there at the base of these trees I've just put in some basic stuff some sort of greenery lots of green some nettles and ferns just getting it all looking a little bit overgrown around the base of the trees there just a couple of shrubs as well nothing too tricky really and then just continued the same thing just nettles and ferns going up the um, up the hillside here again just ferns nettles I didn't want color I wanted it to be green um, I went with these are they, what are these bushes I can't remember hawthorns up here as well again because they're they're a good shape and a good structure but they're not colorful I didn't want flowers um, flowers just aren't right for this sort of habitat and in fact the only color we've got is these uh, the lilies in the water here which is fine because you know that's that's what lilies do they flower like that so that's not a problem I just didn't want flowers at all up here I wanted it to look quite barren and, um, and and fairly dead in a way because that's that's the sort of um, environment that this these rocks and these Himalayan trees uh, are, are suited to uh, with regards to the water I used these um, the common reeds now these are the ones that I don't like to use because they affect the traversable area uh, as I mentioned in the last video these ones affect traversable area and the other ones don't the bulrushes don't but if you if you have a look here you can see um, so when you place these down you'll see the traversable area disappears um, luckily because of how I managed to place them in in this area it didn't really affect um, where the animals could go so you can see here before that that that, that blue would continue right across here but you, you put these ones in and suddenly they, they can't move around them which is very annoying because they're beautiful looking plants um, but they really do block off the animals so you have to be very careful about where you place them but I wanted them in here rather than the other bulrushes I just thought these ones looked better for this environment I like the nice tufty grass look at the top I didn't want the um, the brown bulrush look I wanted this cream look kind of matches the hawthorn and the color of the rock and the color of these Himalayan birches you know that sort of pale pastel colors that's what I was going for in this habitat and that's uh, that's uh, that's why I chose these um, so yeah hopefully you can kind of appreciate where I was coming from with that um, other than that just a few habitation uh, habitation what am I trying to say enrichment items put around I don't know what this one is oh block of frozen fruit um, also got a, 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 tr a tree trunk up there which I like to just dot those around occasionally uh, so you've got some frozen fruit up there you've got um, a little chew toy there uh, you have a what is this is this one of these feeding ones yeah foraging wall this is cool so they put all these bits of fruit in here and then the bears come along and sort of pick uh, all the fruit out of the holes so that's really cool I like that one uh, we have some chimes here for them to play with we have a scent marker bowl we have another food stick here the hammock as I already said where they do climb and lie in it uh, we have a scratching post here and we have another food thing over here another a block of frozen fish so there's lots of things to keep them happy and they are very happy I promise you they're just both heading up here for a little snooze at the moment but you can see they they you know they roam around they climb they swim they sleep 
they are happy sun bears and that is what we like isn't it happy animals in our zoo and that is our sun bear habitat now i appreciate that there wasn't a lot of structure work really going on in this habitat and this zoo is largely about structures but you can't just build buildings for the sake of it um, and again i hope you appreciate that i'm not just going to put a building in in every habitat that i do just for the sake of of being creative with buildings you have to build what's appropriate so obviously i'm also focusing on wildlife and gardens in this zoo and so that's what i've gone with this time I'm trying to create that real feeling of of mountains and being in the uh, sort of the, the peaks in the himalayas and uh, and having these bears in their sort of natural looking environment and so that's what i've tried to do i don't know if i've achieved it you'll be the judge of that i guess um, but i'm very happy with how this habitat turned out i think it looks really nice it fills this gap in really nicely i think it's a good size for the bears they've got plenty of room to get around they've got plenty of things to do they've got plenty of different environments to to play around on with the the, the rocks up here they've got plenty of swimming space and plenty of land space to walk around as well so i think they're very happy i think from a from the public's point of view you've got some pretty good viewing uh, sort of vantage points so as you come along here you can you can certainly see them well from all along here you can see the rock work up here i've not blocked the view at all um, and uh, obviously you can get up close and personal when they're sleeping in the hammock here or when they're walking around here you can see them in the water quite easily from this end um, so yeah i was very careful not to block off all the views i mean you can get quite close to them actually over here but you can't see them up in the bed which is what i wanted i, I wanted that to be their private area uh, you'll you'll see that a lot in zoos where they certain animals can get away and be in their bed without you being able to see obviously a lot in zoos you also get um bed areas that you can look into and i have done that in this zoo and i'll continue to do that when it's appropriate but in this case i really wanted the bears to have somewhere private to go where they could be on their own and away from the public so there we are let's just get an aerial view of our zoo i think it's coming together very nicely now i'm, I'm really pleased I, I mean i love the look of this place it's um it's certainly i think my best looking zoo so far um, again you can be the judge of that and let me know in the comments what you think um, assuming you've seen some of my other zoos of course uh, I guess as as I build more and more things I'm getting better I suppose I, I'm getting more creative and I'm getting better at making the zoos look like um, sort of natural places and, and real maybe a bit more realistic I suppose I don't know um, but yeah I'm very pleased with how it's all coming along so far so this is our sun bears all done and dusted i can tell you on our next episode uh, i think it's our next episode anyway <laughs> i apologize if i get this wrong but in our next episode we will be building a habitat in this area over here now if you saw my last episode you remember me saying that i did an, a habitat there and one over here and i couldn't remember which one came first now obviously this one came first so i'm pretty sure my next habitat is this one over here uh, and uh, shall I tell you what the animal is yeah because you'll find out before you start watching it anyway from the thumbnail won't you I can tell you it's another new animal to the to the game it's just been added in the latest DLC it's going to be a beaver habitat that is going in over here and let me tell you it turned out fantastic I had so much fun building uh, a big beaver dam <laughs> it was great fun really really good and it turned out really really nice it was again it was quite a complicated build um, but it's it's turned out really nice I'm very very pleased with it uh, so yeah so tune in to our next episode for that but for now thank you so much for spending a bit of your time with me I really appreciate it and uh, if you do have anything to say please leave a comment down below and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next episode until then do take care and I'll see you soon.